Welcome to Subramani. Uh, a few easy steps which are necessary before you start investing uh, are <clears throat> uh, something which is, uh, I mean, I would uh, recommend these steps to anybody who has not yet invested. I mean, could be a 22 year old or a 32 year old who has not started investing. So, first, go and build a good foundation. Uh, when I say good foundation, it means uh, increase your knowledge. So, uh, build your uh, financial knowledge for, um, of where, where to invest etc. So, financial literacy and very importantly or rather uh, more importantly make sure that you have the buy-in of your family. So, whether if you are let us say 32 and married uh, your husband, wife, uh, whoever uh, uh, who is not an interested party or who says I do not care, uh, you have to have their buy-in because when the market is going up they will all be on your side, when the market goes down they will say oh you should have removed the money, see the market has fallen. So, you have to have their buy-in, you have to tell them, teach them about equity investing, saying how it is risky, what can go wrong. Uh, right, so you have to have their buy-in. So if you're young, 22, then your parental buy-in. If you're 32, then your spouse buy-in. Uh, whoever you are, boy or girl, it doesn't really matter. Secondly, if you are supporting your parents, if you're supporting your siblings, if you're supporting your family for whatever reasons, uh, they are totally dependent on your money. Then you have to build yourself a. Uh, term insurance. You need term insurance. You need medical insurance. All of them need medical insurance. Right, so take in adequate term insurance and medical insurance first before you start investing. That these are all part of building a great foundation, so that tomorrow if something goes wrong, you know, don't come and ask me. Oh, my mother is in the hospital. Should I not sell equity? Of course, you should sell equity. My mother's health and life is more important. But you should never have come to that stage. You should have had an emergency fund. And with that emergency fund, you should have been able to meet the expenses and uh, you should have had adequate insurance. So, you do not have to sell equity in a distress. So, only when you build a solid foundation for yourself, will you be able to invest exactly as you should be investing. So, the emergency fund, the term insurance, the medical insurance and uh, increasing your financial literacy, getting your family buy-in, these are all steps pre-investing. This is very important to take all these steps so that your investing journey can be smooth and uh, putting a financial plan in place. You should know why you are buying some equity which may be for your retirement which is 30 years away and some which you are putting away for uh, your daughter's uh, admission in school which is maybe 2 years away or 1 year away. Then uh, the investment uh, instrument that you pick will obviously be different. The 30 year investment could go into a, uh, to an index fund, it could go into some direct equity, whatever, whatever suits you. But the money that is required for paying your daughter's school fees after one year or two years <coughs> has to be in kind of a very safe in the sense uh, very low standard deviation debt instrument. It cannot even be in a 30 year guilt, it has to be in a uh, one year paper, ultra short bond fund or a bank fixed deposit, right. So, that is how your appropriateness of the uh, instrument will come only when you have a financial plan in place and you know for what you are investing, right. So, <clears throat> by this time if you have incurred any debt for whatever reasons other than buying a house, if you have a car loan, if you have a credit card loan, a honeymoon loan or whatever loan it is called. Uh, I call all of them your uh, form 16 loan because you have a form 16 you get a loan right. So, pay off all that because nothing is going to give you no investment is going to give you a 16 percent 17 percent kind of return for to be able to uh, to make it worthwhile to keep your loan and your investment. A housing loan yes makes sense because you are never going to repay the whole housing loan so quickly. So, you are going to take a lot of time, maybe you are paying an X amount of 20,000, 50,000, 1 lakh as an EMI. Uh, so, let that continue, you start investing. But if you have any of the other loans that I mentioned in paying off the uh, interest, uh, high interest uh, debt is a very important thing to do. Now that you have a financial plan, obviously you know your financial goals, right? your investment goals. So, you know that there is some goal which is 3 months away, some goal which is 3 years away and some goal which is 30 years away. So, according to that, uh, you have to plan your uh, investment. So, if you are for example, um, 30 years of age and you are planning for your retirement, that could be a good multi-asset fund. 
uh, or a multi cap fund which is good enough for you because uh, you don't have to do anything for the next 20 years 25 years so if it is a multi asset or multi cap then all the money is going into equity in multi cap and all the money is being well managed in case of a multi asset so you could do a combination of multi cap and multi asset but uh, just being fixed uh, just being large cap or just being uh, mid cap may not be very appropriate but some people do that too right <clears throat> so uh, then you see what all, what else you want to do, how much you want to put money in PPF, how much, whatever. Remember one thing, today investment uh, profits are taxable. Now in the US there is a type of account where within which if you do your transaction you don't have to pay tax, you will have to pay tax at a later stage. So right, so it is a tax protected account. In India we don't have a tax protected account at all. It is not as though you can sell one you can put 10 lakhs in the let's say you put 10 lakhs in the equity share that has uh, go, gone to 25 lakhs can you sell that 25 lakhs worth of shares and buy another share worth 25 lakhs and have zero tax no you can't you can do that only in real estate you cannot do that with mutual funds you cannot do it with direct equity that option is just not available so pick your correct type of investment how much in ppf how much in uh, direct equity how much in mutual funds uh, whether you need ATC benefit, it's more or less gone, but it's still there. Many people still claim it, right? So check out all that before you invest. Uh, there is nothing called a tax-free equity share or a tax-free equity mutual fund. Yes, up to 1 lakh per year is tax-free, but that's not going to be very significant uh, in a few years' time, right? Look at all the options that you have in investing, whether it is in mutual fund, whether it is direct equity, etc and then choose a thing which you are comfortable and like uh, Buffett says please choose something which you can understand right both these uh, conditions are pretty useful to have and uh, I think I am at the end of the, uh, end of the video thank you